Vegas take. Sharp and Shapiro, glad he could join us. By the way, we're going to try to get Moses Scurry in studio tomorrow. Uh, his comments about UNLV basketball, raising some eyebrows. Love to get his side of that and have him come in. So we'll work on that one. But in the meantime, we're talking, of course, about the NBA Finals and uh, this buffoon, Mark Stevens, suspended a year. TMZ has done a fantastic job covering this story. And uh, that's why we always love having Mike Babcock from TMZ Sports on the show. Mike, what's going on? How are you doing? What's up, fellas? How are you? Doing good, up, man. Mikey? Like I said, you've done a great job covering this story since when it happened last night, and you guys caught up with uh, P.J. Tucker from the Houston Rockets. What did he have to tell you guys about this? Yeah, well, of course, the uh, the ultimate penalty was a year suspension and a $500,000 fine. I've seen some people who thought that was an appropriate fine, and that was pretty harsh, but you're right, P.J. Tucker... Uh, he essentially demanded a, uh, a stiffer penalty. He said that it should be more, and he didn't feel like, um, you know, what what Mark Stevens got was enough. He didn't think it was appropriate. What do you go? What do you? What is your personal opinion on this? How do you see it playing out? And do you think one year is sufficient? No, I probably would have given him more uh, if it was a fan. Maybe you could argue that that's an appropriate punishment. But as this whole thing unfolded last night and it became clear that this guy is a minority owner of the team, I mean, they have got to know better. We talk about Drake, you know, nonstop, but, um, you know, the, what he did compared to what Drake does on the sideline. Totally different. It's in a different stratosphere. And you can't put your hands on, on a player. You just can't do it. I completely understand that if, if your wife was almost bowled over, she didn't get hurt. It happens when you're sitting courtside. Go sit in a box if you don't want somebody to possibly run into. You can't put your hands on a player. I know I've seen some people in my guy, Van, who I work with, is calling for, um, you know, for him to be arrested for assault. I mean, I think that's, that would clearly be an overreaction. I don't think he was trying to hurt Kyle Lowry, but you can't put your hands on a player ever. You know, and, and I think it's even worse because as an owner, he is – he he gains financially if Kyle Lowry responds negatively and gets himself kicked out of the finals because uh, a Raptors team yeah. without Kyle Lowry is not beating any Warriors team. I don't care if they have clay or, or Kevin or, or whoever it is. And so I think that you have to really take that into consideration. I like, I like a lifetime courtside ban personally. I, I think that's a good idea. Right. So you completely take him out of the equation. You make sure something like this never happens right. again. And, Yet you don't go like to the, uh, you know, the clearly a different situation, but you don't go the Donald Sterling route where you're essentially forcing him to sell his stake in the team. So he can still stay owner, but, you know, watch from home. I actually like that. Yeah, or, or, idea. or watch from, from the press box or from 20 rows right. up. Just, just not just not top three, just not the first three rows. Now, here's something else that happened, and it, it involved – the the owner of the Warriors, the, the the big owner, Jacob Jacob Lackab, and his wife. His wife was trying to talk to Jay Z, and Beyonce was sitting next to her, and it looked like she leaned over, and she kind of broke through Beyonce's personal space, <laughs> and apparently fans of Beyonce, they're called the Bay Hive, have been sending her death threats, to the point where she had to actually eliminate her Instagram. Tell me about this. It, right. I mean, it, it just happened to have been caught on TV by the cameras. And she leaned over to ask Jay-Z what kind of drink he wanted and if he wanted a lime with his vodka club because Jay and Beyonce were their guests at the game. Right. And right, like you said, Beyonce's fans, who I have never been scared in my life on the TV shows to, you know, ever to say anything. We've dealt, We've talked about gangs. We've talked about crazy stuff. I bit my tongue today because you do not want to cross these people. They will ruin your life. These Beyonce fans are that intense. And, uh, yeah, like you said, they, they've forced her to – she still has the Instagram, but she had to turn off all the comments because she was getting death threats and they were threatening her. And they have just completely, you know, blown this thing out of the water. I, we don't even know if Beyonce was upset. I mean, really, did, did she look a little peeved that maybe she, she – Yeah, she, she looked, uh, she looked you know, a bit annoyed. You know, across? Sure, sure, but to the to the point where this woman is getting death threats is incredible. 
Yeah. All because of a woman from Destiny's Child that decided to marry Jay Z and become, you know, this well, popular. I just don't get it. it. It's, it's just <laughs> terrifying because I mean, she literally did absolutely nothing wrong, and it was yeah, all just based just, on their perception. Well, people are idiots on social well, media. I mean, it's, yeah, but you, that, this is beyond idiocy. This is this is complete well, insanity. Obviously, death threats are serious. I just do. I do want to go quickly back to Mark Stevens. Here's what I think they should do. Yeah. I think they should sue him for two billion point one point one one nine. Uh, leave a hundred thousand dollars in his bank account, force him to sell all of his property. That's what I think they should do. And I would like to see him work for maybe $15 an hour somewhere for a year. That's what I would like to do. You think that's over the line? That's called undercover boss. Yeah, $2.2 billion <laughs> sue him for. Sue him for $2.2 billion and spread the wealth around uh, to all uh, Toronto Raptors fans. Yeah, that's what I think they should <laughs> That's what I think he should Just do. And hand I think, out money in Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think. I think what they should do is Game 7, when the Toronto Raptors win in Game 7, take $2.2 billion of $100 bills from Mark Stevens' bank account and splatter it all over the arena after they win. That's what I think they should do. I don't even know if there'll be a Game 7 if the Warriors don't get back some of these players that they're missing. That's true, they man. nobody right now. That's true. I, and you forget how valuable Klay Thompson is. I mean, you see... you see. Oh, I if, think he is the most underrated guy. He is incredible. Just both ways, not just offensively, obviously. His defense is amazing. And, yeah, he, he is so important to the team, clearly, as, as we saw last night. Yeah, I mean, I think Klay Thompson's the, the, probably the most... I mean, you could make the argument, obviously, for Draymond Green, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry. Of course you could. But I, I think Klay Thompson is so underrated he is such a good player on both ends of the floor. And when he's not yeah. out there, you know, look, you saw what happened. Steph Curry can score 47 points. They still get blown out. So it doesn't uh, matter. Yeah, that's no. why I wonder, looking forward to next year in the future, if, if uh, Clay doesn't have that inside of him where he wants to prove to people and finally yeah. be appreciated for, for, I mean, this guy's likely a future Hall of Famer if it, if it continues the way, yeah. it, uh, you know, the, the, the first part of his career. Is sure. Done. But he's a, he's a tremendous player. Yeah, he really is. Uh, if you're just joining us, Mike Babcock, TMZ Sports. So I want to uh, move real quickly to a big story that you guys have covered today, and it is not a good look for the NFL and Terrell Dotson, another domestic violence issue. You guys released uh, a 911 call that uh, Dotson's girlfriend made what can you tell us mm -hmm. about this and is this really going to affect his career uh, yeah i mean I, I think it it probably has to if you listen to that 911 tape that we posted a couple hours ago you hear his girlfriend on there and she's she's frantic she very plainly says on the uh, tape that he hit me across my face and um uh, you know you, you you can tell i mean that's that's the type of terror i think that you you can't make up now throughout the entire incident uh, when cops finally caught up to him which was it's it's bizarre because the alleged incident happened and then he fled uh cops were, cops were responding he fled and he went to a nightclub and that's actually where cops ultimately found him a couple hours later and he was arrested inside of the club good choice and uh he yeah then he was uh, you know adamantly denying uh, ever having touched anybody uh you know his ever having touched his girlfriend to the cops um, it's just a bizarre story. She also says that he took something like ten thousand uh, dollars from a safe that they had in the house. So um, the bills are aware of it. When I called them, when we originally broke this story, what uh, I guess was uh, you know about ten days ago now, but they said they were aware of it and they were investigating. But um, yeah, he's in some trouble. He's in some trouble. Yeah. It seems like there's there's a good well, deal of evidence here. Stay on it. And, uh, yeah. Stay on it. I yeah, wanted to, I, I wanted to bring up one more story. It's so ridiculous. I laugh at this. You know, I used to love the Howard Stern show. I used to love it when uh, people from the Howard Stern show would prank it and go on these news stations and swear on live TV. I actually mm -hmm. thought I actually thought that was funny and I enjoyed it. I'm a big Howard Stern guy. But you have this Toronto Raptors fan that was arrested. He goes on live to I see. I don't agree with this. I don't agree with what he said. So let me just explain. You know, he, he, he goes on TV and he says he wants to F Aisha Curry, Steph Curry's wife. And he mm -hmm. says he wants to F her uh, and then uses another bad word, the word that Donald Trump used, grab him by the you know what. He says it on mm -hmm. live TV. Now, it was shocking. See, to me, that wasn't funny. There was nothing funny about saying that. No. Uh, there, there, there are ways to swear on live TV, sadly, right. I think, that are funny. That just was not funny. Um, it's not like he no. said F the Toronto, Ra you know, F the Golden State Warriors. Right. That to me, that actually would have been funny. I wouldn't right. have had a I problem with that. We've all seen clips like this, but when you're talking about a specific person and somebody's wife, I found 
I found, you know, the same thing. I didn't think it was funny. He's 28 years old, so at some point you have to grow up. And the, <laughs> yeah. what we have now learned is laws in Canada are different. So uh, maybe, you know, the free speech issues are a little bit different. And he's in trouble. Like you said, he was arrested. This guy actually called our newsroom today, and he's looking to do – uh, interview, which may or may not happen, we'll see. You know, we'll see what this guy ultimately is looking for. But he, he wants to apparently do an interview, and he says he's going to take full responsibility and he wants to apologize. Clearly, he can't deny it because we all know what happened. But uh, he apparently is, you know, wants to do this mea culpa and apologize. And I, I imagine he wants to try to wiggle his way out of the you know tough situation that he's found himself. Do you in. think he was intoxicated? And that's what he says. <laughs> he says he was drunk. Yeah, well, that, uh, that probably makes word. sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Babcock, we always appreciate hey, it. When you I got to say one thing, Mikey. I think we jinxed Cody Bellinger. He's gone like 3 of 28. <laughs> I know. I was thinking of that yesterday. I think he did. Wow. Oh, <laughs> he'll be all right. Anointing him a you know, the next Joe DiMaggio. The Vegas take Dodger jinx. Uh, Mr. Babcock, always appreciate it when you take some time to join us, my man. Keep up the good work. We'll catch up with you next week. Thanks, guys. All right. Yeah, thanks a lot, Mikey. There you go. Mike Babcock from TMZ Sports. You know, I, like I said, I grew up loving Howard Stern, right? And, and these guys from the Howard Stern show, there are several of them. They'll, they're, like, they're like TV terrorists and radio terrorists. So they'll see like a live news crew on the scene of it, it could be a crime or, you know, it, it could be they're covering an event, whatever the case may be. And these guys find a way to get in the, the live shot and they'll say ridiculous things. They'll talk about Howard Stern's genitalia. They'll, they say things that are, a lot of people would consider immature, but when it's live on TV and you have a serious anchor person or a reporter, I find it to be funny. I like that humor. But there, to me, if this fan said, you know, F the Golden State Warriors, I would have laughed at that. I would have thought it was funny. You know, if, if, if he made fun of somebody on the Warriors in a funny way, but you go after somebody's wife and you say you want to F Steph Curry's wife in the you know where not only is it not funny it's shocking and it's just it's an awful thing to say it's a t why would you bring Steph Curry's wife into this you know I it just doesn't make it doesn't make any sense to me but it is also very very interesting that you can arrest somebody for that because if that correct me if I'm wrong but if that happens in this country I don't think you're breaking the law right I don't know. You tell me. Do you know? Do you, I don't know the laws. Can you swear on a live TV broadcast and say something like that? Can they well, arrest I'm, you I'm for that? I'm sure the station can get fined. I'm not talking about uh, our show. I'm just saying, say somebody's doing a live shot for like Channel Eight or something. Well, I mean, it's, say it, Ron Futrell. It's, 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 an, it's just it's an opinion that you have. I mean, it's 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 free speech. You can say whatever you want to, but but yeah. the station can choose not to have you back. And obviously, there's well, going to be repercussions right, but, uh, within but, that. You but can, I'm not talking about a guest. I'm not talking about inviting somebody on. I, I, right. I'm giving you an example. Ron Futrell, our friend Ron Futrell from Channel Eight. Okay, I'll tell let, you what could happen. Let I me just give you a scenario. Okay. Uh, let's just say Ron Futrell is doing a live shot in front of uh, T-Mobile Arena previewing an upcoming hockey game, an upcoming night's game, and he's doing his live shot. Keep in mind, he's live, and somebody just runs up to him and starts swearing at him and says, F the Knights, or I'm just giving an example. I don't think you can, you can arrest that person, right? But apparently in Toronto, you can. That's, you know, what, so if somebody did that here, it happens all the time. I've never heard of somebody getting arrested in this country for that. I think what Aisha Curry could do is she could get a restraining order against that specific person. She could take it as a personal threat. It sounds to me... But, yeah, the laws in Canada are definitely different than they are in the United States. It sounds to me that this guy was probably intoxicated. Not an excuse, but he was probably drunk. The fact that he's remorseful and he wants to apologize leads me to believe that that would be a complete and utter waste of time to file a restraining order against a guy like that. I think he was just drunk out of his mind, and he did said something very dumb. <laughs> that you know what the, the, the you know what the funny part is about this. If there's any funny part about this at all, it's the reaction from the people around him. They're like, "Oh my God, did he just say that?" She's interviewing a couple fans, and and they seem really nice. And then all of a sudden, this guy gets in front of the microphone and he says what he says. The reaction of the people around him, including the anchor, is priceless because it, it, it's shocking. It's shocking that it's shocking that he said something like that. That's that was the shocking part about this. Do I think he deserved to be arrested? No, I don't. I think I, I think he's an idiot. Um, I think he did something really dumb. 
do I think he deserves to be arrested? No. Now, if you want to find the guy for, I don't know, uh, if you want to cite the guy or find the guy for, for something like, 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 for example, jaywalking, something along those lines, but don't put handcuffs on him and put him into jail. That's a waste of taxpayer money. In my opinion, that is a waste of money and resources. Would you agree with that? I don't. I, yeah, I, it's just it, it's it's kind of got that martial law to, to, <laughs> dictator kind of feel to it, you know. It's, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of arresting somebody for doing that, but I I wouldn't be I wouldn't be shocked or opposed to Aisha Curry if if she responded however she wanted to respond yeah. to that. Yeah, and I, and I and I certainly I certainly hope he learned his lesson because now he's now he's like the laughing stock. Let me let me put it to you this way. This guy, Mark Stevens, in my opinion, what he did is far more serious than what this guy did. Would you agree with that? A hundred percent. Yeah. Because, again, and people aren't thinking about this, he could have easily, if, if, if Lowry responded negatively and got himself thrown out of the finals or suspended for a week or whatever it was, the Raptors have no chance of winning the series. Right. And Mark Stevens is making a, a decent, because he's a, he's a minor, minority owner in the team, he's actually putting money in his pocket. Yeah. Yeah. And that could have easily happened. If Lowry didn't have, if Lowry just decided to get hot headed, which which could happen, and I mean, in in a moment like that, you never know what's going to take place. He could it, have easily responded totally differently. There is there is no doubt that it could have been a lot worse. <laughs> I mean that that whole situation could have been a lot worse. You know, in, in a fan, okay, fine, they're they're kicked out for whatever, but they're not making money when when the Warriors are winning the championship. Yeah, they're they're gonna have some beers with their friends and they're gonna say, oh yeah, we're the champions. But Mark Stevens is actually putting money in his pocket. Mm-hmm. And, and he's actually, and if he can dictate that situation by baiting a player to react to him and getting themselves thrown out, that's a huge deal in my opinion. Yeah, it is. I agree. I agree. Why don't we, uh, you know, we talked a little UNLV hoops. We talked about Moses Scurry and the comments he made about UNLV Athletic Department. Doesn't put UNLV, shed UNLV in a very nice light when you have a legend like that. But uh, in other news, we talked a little bit about the UNLV out-of-conference basketball schedule. While the official Mountain West Conference schedule has also been released. Out-of-conference schedule looks pretty good. We talked about that a little bit yesterday. Uh, UNLV opens up the season at Fresno. Their first game is at home in conference is at home against Utah State. Utah State's a really good team. Most of those guys are coming back. Uh, did they, are they losing their center to the NBA draft? No, Nemius, Nemius Keita came back. They're actually ranked the, their top night, their top 20 right now by ESPN. So, obviously, they're going to be the number one team in the Mountain West They conference. should be, yes. Yeah. They have to be. Who, who's going to beat them? San Jose State? So anyway, that's the first home game. Utah State comes to town January 1st. Uh, their last game is at San Jose State. If you're wondering when that UNR game is, uh, that's going to be that's certainly going to be an interesting game. Steve Alford coaching UNR. That is Wednesday, February 12th. If you want to mark your calendars on that one point. There's, you know, the Mountain West is going to be decent this year. I don't know how good Nevada is going to be. They pretty much lost everybody. They have a new system. They have a new coach. And Alford's not a good coach. He's not a good X's and O game don't, day don't coach. Don't think he's a great he, coach. He needs, he needs major recruits to be solid. He needs players. Uh, Utah State's going to be very good. Air Force is going to be lousy. I think Fresno State, uh, I like Fresno, Fresno State. Fresno State returns a lot at guard. Very I, good I, coach. I, I haven't looked at I, Again, I haven't done a lot of research on the Mountain West this year. But uh, really good coach. Really good coach. Outstanding and, coach. And, and we had him at UNLV as an assistant, and he decided to leave. But good coach doing a good job over there at Fresno. Boise State, you know, Leon Rice just can't get over the hump. I guess he has a lot of job security over there, but uh, Boise State's going to be okay. Wyoming's going to be terrible. San Jose State's going to be terrible. They shouldn't even be a D1 team. What do you think about New Mexico? Because year one with this new coach, fantastic when Menzies left, and then last year was a complete and total disaster. What happened with New Mexico last year? JD, I was asking you something with new mexico stay with me on this one yeah the and new mexico's <laughs> they, they just weren't very they, they were they were they ended up beating nevada a pretty not a, a very overrated nevada team by what 20 at home mm-hmm. they, they just weren't very good how about san diego state san diego state could be very very good i'm, I'm not a big fan of their coach not a big fan but uh colorado state i don't expect much from them so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this, this isn't a, a, it's not a very good conference. Utah State's a top 20 team. I think Utah State takes over for how good UNR was last year. 
And, of course, Utah State coming off of a win in the Mountain West Conference Tournament. Their coach is fantastic. And maybe it's, 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 that's it. I mean, the, uh, is it everybody else fighting for second and third in this conference? I mean, that's what we thought with Nevada last year. And then look what happened in the Mountain West Conference Tournament. Who can beat Utah State? Can anybody in this conference beat Utah State? In your opinion, at this point, I I would say no, but I need to I need to research more. Again, I haven't done a lot of research on it. I'm going to say no. I don't think there's anybody in this conference that that can beat them. I think there's there's Utah State, and then the, then there's like three or four teams that are decent teams that you could maybe make the argument for that they're like an NIT team. I have no idea what UNLV is going to do. I think UNLV is probably going to be in the middle of the pack somewhere, maybe fifth or sixth in the conference. That's where I would guess. But, boy, you got some really bad teams in this conference. San Jose State is just terrible. Wyoming is awful. Air Force is terrible. Three really, really bad teams. But they're always terrible. I mean, when was the last time we said that, you know, Air Force was in the NCAA tournament or San Jose State? I mean, these are just really, really bad teams. Arguably, you can make the same case for UNLV. They've been really bad for a long time. I think the last time they got into the NCAA tournament was, was I, I, I believe, Dave Rice. That was the last time they got in the tournament, and they and they never won an NCAA tournament game under Dave Rice. The last time they won games was under Lon Kruger. If you recall, they made the Sweet 16. I'm really excited and happy that Kevin Kruger is a part of the coaching staff. He came on the show. I think they got a good coaching staff put together. I, while I understand Moses Scurry's frustration, and I, and I really do, by the way, you but, can't. I mean, you can't make the argument that a guy like a Larry Johnson should be coaching. You can't make that argument. Now, should they maybe give him an interview out of respect? Sure. Absolutely. Well, and, and, and Jamison mentioned it. He said that Jawan Howard has been on the Heat for the last eight years. I mean, it's not like he has no coaching experience whatsoever. He has some. I was really surprised that Jamison said it wasn't going to work out because because the team is not going to play defense, which we talked about. We did, we didn't think that it was going to, but I do think that this team will score a lot of points at least in the second year when they have David Jenkins. The first year, I mean, this this could be a really bad year. This could be a year where, where T.J. Altsberger goes, I mean, he could win less than 12 games. You think it could be that bad? That would be that would be a disaster. It, it, it's possible. It could be. That would be really, really bad. Amari Hardy is still a very, very talented kid. I, 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 as far as these new guys that are on this team, I don't know. I, I know that their point guard was a guy who averaged five points a game for Texas. Not, ver- not, not really a guy that's going to, you know, he, he might be another Noah Robotham, maybe worse. So, uh, I don't know. Talent-wise, I don't think they have a ton of talent. I, I mean, I love Amari Hardy's game, but I just don't think they have a lot of talent. You know, I, I think don't. It, it depends on Jong's development offensively and how Nick Blair is off. He's Nick, Nick Blair, I think, is kind of the X factor because he is a good, he's, he's a solid offensive player. He's skilled. He's technically sound. He's not very big. And he's going to give you a lot of effort, so I, th- I think that's kind of what it comes down to. And then if you know the, if this Jonah Antonio kid plays pretty well, I mean, by by all, by all accounts, he's a he's a six five, two hundred pound sharpshooter who doesn't play defense and who can't really dribble the ball. Now, is that going to really do much? And I think, he, I think obviously Bryce Hamilton needs to grow up too. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't know how this year is going to go, but uh, he's you know Otzelberger's got a lot of pressure on him. He's making one point one million dollars. Got to get it done. Got to compete for a championship. He's got his work cut out for him, but I think we're going to learn a lot about the team in the first week or two of the season. And I'm going to eat probably 12 Otzel burgers this year. <laughs> you might. You, I, it's I, going to happen. I'll take your word the for it. The burger is going to be a thing. We will make sure of that. I'm kind of hungry. An Otzel burger sounds really good right now. Hey, the legend Ken Thompson coming up next, folks. Uh, same time, same place tomorrow. What will Donald Trump say next? Well, I guarantee you we'll talk about it tomorrow. We'll have some fun. We'll try to get Moses Scurry on the show. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a great night. Catch you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to The Vegas Take on the all-new 101.5 FM, 720 AM, K-Don. M 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 720 AM